Hey, I'm Light, and today we'll finally figure out if it's possible to beat Bug Fables without ever taking any damage. If you want to start from the beginning, go watch part 1 where I go over the rules of this challenge in details. Without further ado, let's continue the damage less adventure. After our clutch victory on B33, we go back to the hive to grab the bad book in V's sister room and we talk to Bianca to activate a quest for later. Then we report back the artifact that we found in the honey factory and chapter 4 starts. I go back to a different route and I talk to this weird guy in the well to get the rusty key which grants us access to the bandit hideout. At the Defense Road Caravan, I buy the Reflection Medal, then I go right to grab the Meditation Medal. Reflection gives us plus 1 defense when we do nothing in combat. Meditation gives us plus 1 TP when we do nothing in combat. Those medals sounds weird, but they're really useful on Kabu. Basically, they enable a strat where we can town style with him without needing bubble shielding. After that, I went to the Roach room to talk to Hawk and get the even key. Since I talked to Hawk two times in the desert, I can go back to the lab and grab the ADBP and answer metal. This metal increases the amount of times Tornado Toss and Hurricane Toss can hit, but it increases the TP cost by one. I then went into the Bandit hideout with the Rusty key. After learning dig with Kabu, we sneak around the bandit hideout and we grabbed our stuff back and got a bound berry, which increased our TP by one. I equipped the super block plus, reflection and meditation on Kabu, and I went into the Asto fight. Hastelis has 43 HP and 0 defense. There's something really special about this fight, we cannot use any item. So we can't get carried by them, so we'll need to rely on our horn power this time around. He has 2 attack, a swipe that does 3 damage, and a multi stab attack that does 2 damage in 2 hits. He can randomly be in a parry stance after getting attacked, which increases defense by 2. We need to hit him with a flipping attack to cancel it, like Kabu's horn. In phase 2, he'll attack twice per turn. This fight is all about super blocking, so my first few tries was more to understand his attack and practice my super block timing. After dying, I equipped Super Block Plus on V instead of Kabu. My strat was pretty simple, taunting with Kabu and doing nothing to increase his defense, and attacking with V after that. Since taunting costs 2 TP and doing nothing gives me back 1 TP, with the Meditation Medal, it only costs me 1 TP per turn, so I can stall for a while with that. I just need to hit my Super Block if Asto does his swap attack. After around 40 minutes, I got this attempt. Turn 1, I just attack with everyone to reduce the HP as fast as possible. The only bad RNG is him focusing Leaf or Kabu with the swipe attack that does 3 damage. Then I do the usual stalling with Kabu front to put him in phase 2.
I continue on with this strat until he is at 9 HP and I finish him off with 2 heavy strike. Looking back on this boss, it seems my main problem was figuring out the Kabu strat and then getting the super block on the swap attacks. Nevertheless, I defeated Atlas without taking damage in 19 tries. Right after this fight, we got the other key to the sand castle and we went into the dune scorpion fight. Dune scorpion has 38 HP and 1 defense. There is also a psycorp that has 8 HP and 0 defense. The dune scorpion attacks are a sting that does 3 damage, can put to sleep or poison, pinch that does 3 damage and multi hit attack and Boulder Throw that does 4 damage to everyone. If we get the AoE we need to reset the fight obviously, so it's the only like RNG part of the fight, so we should be good. I tried the Kabu do nothing strat and I could succeed for sure with it, but the boss could still do the Boulder Throw attack when, even if I taunted, so I decided to change my strat. I went back to the Fant route and I cooked the spicy fries to use in a poison build. I did some side quests and I went into the Dune Scorpion fight again. I wasn't sure if poison would still hit me even in Bubble Shield, so I had to test it and yes it does, crap. So it got me thinking, or am I gonna use a poison strat? Can I even do it? I went back again to do some shopping and I grabbed the power exchange which up our attack by 1 but decrease our defense by 1 also. I really wanted to try a weird strat on dude scorpion. Okay okay so hear me out. What if, what if we poison V with something to buff her attack and poison her with weak stomach. We attack with her and then we de-poison her with a mushroom or something like that. Yeah. It's big brain time, boys. My build before the fight was Poison Attacker, Weak Stomach and Super Block plus on V, and Strong Start on Leaf. Looking back on the strat, it's pretty useless, cause when you consider the fact that I only do 4 more damage when Poison, uh, but hey, I was stubborn with the idea of beating the boss with this strat, so I tried and tried and here's the result. Turn 1 I do my poison shenanigans, so spicy fries and deep poisoning with mushroom. I also use a burly bomb to decrease his defense. I got pretty good RNG on the Psycorp since he didn't attack and the Dune Scorpion focused to be with Super Block Plus. Turn 2 I could have finished the Dune Scorp but I attacked the Psycorp instead. I used the Numbnail Dart which has a 50% chance of working on him. And I got the sleep. I killed the, the, the Psycorp and I restored my TP. Then I use a cherry bomb and fun fact when you wake up an enemy with an attack he still won't attack this turn. I finished him off with heavy strikes. After this really weird fight we level it up and I choose metal points.
We are now ready to go to the sand castle. After a bunch of ice puzzles, I made my way to the warden's fight. Here, I equipped Leaf with power exchange and strong start on V. They all have 11 HP, and the fight is over with a spicy berry on Leaf and 3 ice falls. I now only have one fight to go to finish chapter 4. Watcher. Watcher has 56 HP and 0 defense. He can buff the attack or defense randomly before attacking. His attacks are Spark, 3 damage, 2 hits, Drain, a mashing attack that does 1 damage and heals for 1, Frigid Coffin, does 3 damage and freeze, and Ice Fall, 4 damage to everyone and freeze. He can also summon a wall that has 3 HP in front of him, and he can go underground where you need to attack, attack him with leave. In phase 2, at around 25 HP, he'll attack twice per turn and he'll be able to heal for about 10 HP. I first tried to stall with Kabu, but I quickly realized that I won't be able to. The drain attack cannot be blocked, and even with double mashing, you'll still receive 1 damage. So you have to bubble shield for this attack. After getting my ass kicked for the first few tries, I decided to go back farming berries and shopping. In the Bandit Idol cafeteria, there's a regional squash that respawns when you leave the area. I farmed a bunch, and I cooked some squash tarts. Squash Tarts gives plus 1 attack for 3 turns and recover 2 TP per turn for 3 turns. I forgot to record it, but I also got the Berserker medal in the Jumper Cavern. Berserker gives plus 3 attack power, but you can't block, use item, skill or relay, and you can't be relayed to. With my new items and medals, I was ready to fight Watcher. My medals are Strong Start, Berserker and Favorite 1 on V. My first try with this strat went like this. Turn 1, I attacked twice with V and spied with Kabu since it's my first try. Then I used a bubble shield on V. I'm pretty much praying that uh, Watcher only focus V and doesn't do any AoE. Turn 2, I used the squash starts on V and I bubble shield and attack. I got really lucky in the boss focus speed 2 turns in a row. It's about a 60% chance to focus the front party member each turn. Turn 3, I tried a nice fall on him, which is 25% of working, and I got it. I decided to town and bubble shit with Kabu since he's really low on HP. I got lucky and he didn't do any AoE. I tried taunting with Bubble Shell again and he did the same thing, no AoE. Thank <laughs> you. 
had no more TP left so I couldn't finish him with heavy strikes. Took me a while to realize that I could recover TP and use bubble shield out to guarantee a win. Just like that, Watcher was defeated without taking damage in 3 tries. Not gonna lie, I got extremely lucky in this fight. Should have been way harder than to complete, but hey, we take it. After beating Watcher, we grab the artifact and head outside the sand castle. Surprise! The end kingdom is under attack. We make our way to the end queen and the west. King fight starts. This fight is uh, unwinnable. It's a scripted fight, so we just need to resist three turns for it to end. Should be simple with bubble shell all every turns, right? Well, what can we do versus an attack that does 99 damage to everyone and goes through shield? Seems like our journey can't go any further. Mm. Or can it? See, after beating the Watcher, you don't have to collect the artifact. You can exit the Sand Castle normally. The problem here is how are we gonna proceed with the story? The border to the West Kingdom is closed until Chapter 4 ends. Do we have a way of getting to Chapter 5 without completing Chapter 4? Conveniently for us, the answer is yes. See, after completing Chapter 3, we talked to the Bee Queen to activate a quest. This quest opens the power plant in Golden Settlement. After completing the quest, we could have access to a small part of Far Grasslands. But, we have to defeat another boss, Brood Mother. After a bunch of side quests, berry farming and playing cards game, I got the first plating medal, which negates the first hit a party member takes. And I was ready to fight Brood Mother. Brood Mother has 65 HP and 0 defense. Her attacks are Charge, that does 4 damage, Electric Projectiles, that does 2 damage with the hits, Delayed Electric sh Shot, that does 2 damage, and she can summon mages that will attack you if you attack Brood Mother. They have 5 HP. My first strat was Kabu Town Team, but she has too much HP, so I went with the Poison V again. Turn 1, I use a spicy fries on V to put her in poison and boost her attack for 2 turns. I do 2 tonight toss and I use a clear water to remove the poison. I get good RNG and she doesn't do the charge attack. Turn 2, I do 2 tornado toss with V and I try an omnil dart with a 60% chance of working. I get the sleep and I continue with tornado toss to wake, to wake the boss, but the boss will still skip her turn next turn. Thank <laughs> you. 
I use an F an Fidu to recover DP, but I used it on V by accident. Since she has a weak stomach, it poisons her, so I need to remove the poison with a mushroom. I finished the fight with Tornado Toss and Bubble Shield All, and Broodmother was defeated without taking damage in 7 tries. After the fight, we get another level up, and I decided to go with Metal Points again. Now we can make our way to the far grasslands. The big rock here is blocking our path. We only get dash mid chapter 5 so it's gonna be really tough to get over it. But I started thinking about a way to still continue on. I noticed that a jumping spider can get really close to the map border. That's when I knew that it might be possible to go over the rock. See, in speedrunning there's a way to clip inside the map border and pretty much infinite jump to the top of the map border. If you freeze an enemy and put it really close to a wall so that there's a small gap between the wall and the enemy. You can hit the frozen enemy with the boomerang and get under it to get pushed inside the wall. So that's what I did. I jumped high enough so that I could get on this ledge and drop down to skip the need of dashing to continue. Since the Wasking scripted fight is unwinnable in damage lists, this glitch is allowed in this challenge. This also means that it is impossible to beat the game damage lists without using glitches. But we successfully did the glitch and now we are in chapter 5. After this part, we make our way to the entrance of far grasslands with bubble shielding. And Mackie is there! Chapter 5 seems to go on normally, so that's really good for us. We get to the far grasslands swamp area and the leaf bug fight starts. The fight doesn't need much explanation, we just spam ice fall with buff to leaf and finish with one understrike. After getting ambushed by the leaf bugs on the bridge, we lose Maki and we learn dash with Kabu. Alright, so I just need to do the simple puzzle. Get back to Maki and no, I need to read all my save file now. Okay, now, now, no more getting first strike by enemy. Okay, I just need to push this ice block and oh come on. Okay, at least I got the super block. I can now fight this fight. This area is gonna be the death of me. After reloading my save file three times and doing all the puzzle all over again, I got to Maki and started the beast fight. Alright, I won't keep the suspense really long. This fight is also unwinnable. When the beast has 10 HP, he'll kill V and Leaf with a 99 damage attack, like West King. So we'll have to skip it too. I went back to defend route to finish a quest and I get a second reflection medal. I thought it would up my defense by 2 with the 2 equipped, but it ups my defense by 1 for 2 turns. So not that useful. I also forgot to mention it earlier, but I got the second meditation medal in the metal shop. So with bold metal equipped, I can recover 2 TP by doing nothing. Since we skipped the beast, we can't have access to river's toxin which makes poison ill. Would have been so helpful, but oh well. We'll have to do without it. Alright, so now, how are we gonna proceed with chapter 5? In the path we unlocked after defeating Broodmother, there's a wooden gate that guards the entry to the West Kingdom. Luckily for us, there's a glitch used in speedrun to access this part. This is PC only, but if we hold the beam ring in place and hold the print screen, and we then release the beam ring and print screen, the beam ring will go through the gate and hit the switch, and just like that, we have access to the West Kingdom. This is right after the beast fight, so we only skip this fight. Hmm? <laughs> 
After sneaking our way through, we make our way to the General Ultimax fight. This fight is really easy, so I won't talk about much about it, but we just have to buff Kabu with Prison Metal and use Understrike with Heavy Strikes, and the fight is pretty much done after that. After the fight, we go back to the end queen room, where the West King is attacking again. Luckily for us, the, there's no scripted fight here again, so chapter 6 starts after the cutscene. We get the end compass, which gonna let us fast travel, and it's super useful for side quests and cooking. We buy front support in the underground tavern. It costs 8 MP, so we might not use it, it's a bit too costly. We make our way to the first second lands, and V learns fly. Now, we can access a bunch of places in the overworld with the fly ability, so that's exactly what I do. I complete a bunch of side quests, and I buy the spicy paper for 150 berries, which permanently increase the attack of one ally by one. I use it on V. I also buy the maximum amount of charms to this guy. Charms will randomly appear in battle to boost our attack, defense, heal us, or heal our TP. After that, I go back to the 4 second lands, and after some flying puzzle, I make my way to the primal weevil. Primal weevil has 65 HP and 1 defense. His attacks are Slash that does 3 damage, 2 hits, Tail Swing that does 5 damage, a Screech that does 1 damage to everyone and none, Howl that does an attack up for 1 turn, he does that before attacking sometimes, and Dash Grab does 6 damage on, uh, if you don't block and 4 damage if you super block. You can also summon a Weevil. Alright, so my first build was Power Exchange, ADBP and Answer, Prison Attacker, and Weak Stomach on V, and Strong Start on Leaf. But after a few tries, I removed the Prison stuff for first plotting. So now, V could tank the first hit. Turn 1, I use a Squash Tarts on V and a Burly Bomb on the boss to reduce his defense. Then, I do an 1 Hurricane Toss, and I try an Omnial Dart that fails. I had about a 30% chance of sleeping the boss. I got lucky and he focused V, and since I have first plotting, it does zero damage. I finish the fight with two hurricane toss and one long leg summoners. Our long leg summoners are available in the wizard tower in four grasslands. They do six damage per thing on, the, on a target. And just like that, we beat Primal Weevil without taking damage in six tries. The fight was really easy, it was all about turn one RNG and the boss focusing V, or me getting the thumbnail darts, so it wasn't that bad really. After the fight, we make our way to the Termite Kingdom. I talked to the Termite King with the End Queen, then I bought 2 Mega Rush, and I went to the Colosseum fight. Mega Rush grants us plus 1 attack for 3 turns, and 1 charge for our first attack. After 3 turns, we'll have attack minus 1 for 2 turns. Here, we have to do 3 fights in a row. Cool thing is, if we fail a fight, we can retry directly on that fight, so we don't have to do everything over again. First fight, I put Kabu in front and use Understrike to take out the pumping, and use Tornadotus to kill the spider. We get a level up, and I choose Metal again. Next fight, I use a Mega Rush on V and kill Poi. I need to restore my TP before the next fight, so I use a Numbnail Dart on Cross. It's a 45% chance of working, and I got it. I use one Glazed Honey to restore my TP, and I finish the fight with a normal attack. Last fight is Zasp with Motiba 2.
The fight is pretty much the same as in chapter 2, but they have a little bit more HP. The goal is the same, kill Motiva as soon as possible so that she can't buff Sass. Turn 1, I do squash darts on V and numbnail darts on Zasp. I have a 65% chance of getting the sleep. Then I do 2 tunnel toss on Motiva. Since I have first plotting, Motiva attacks doesn't do anything and I kill her with tunnel toss. I restore my TP with 1 I feed you and I attack Zap with a tornado toss. I finish him with 3 tornado toss. The fight was way easier than I thought it would be and it only took me 2 tries. Abusing numbnail darts has proven being really good. After this fight, we go back to the Termite King, who grants us access to the submarine. We go back to Bulgaria Pier and receive 100 berries from the Queen. I now have, have access to pretty much all of Bulgaria, so I did some exploring and, and cooking. Then I went straight to Rubber Prison. There is no mandatory fight except the boss here, so after getting all the books, I opened the door to the chapter boss. Ultimax tank has 70 HP and 1 defense. Its attacks are a bullet that does 4 damage, 2 hits, double delayed missile that does 4 damage, a charge that, does, that give him 2 charge and 1 defense up for 1 turn. Then after that he does an AoE that does 4 damage to everyone. He has he can summon a West Trooper or West Scout and he can also throw some bombs. Uh, at phase 2 starts at 40 HP when his tank is going to be a little bit damaged and then when you put him at 0 Ultimax will come out with 20 HP. Alright, so this fight is also easy. It all comes down to if Ultimax does his charge attack, so he will lose a turn and I'll be able to kill him in two turns. I start the fight with a squash tarts on V and Broly Bomb, and I do two Hurricane Toss. He does the charge attack, so I can finish him in two turns with Hurricane Toss. Ultimax uh, arrived and he focused Kabu, so I could have just blocked and he would have been fine. And the fight is over in two tries. Is it just me or it's getting really easy? After the fight, we get the flame brooch and chapter 7 starts. I went back to the end kingdom to do some shopping and I picked up TP plus at the metal shop and break at the caravan. It's time to enter the giant's lair. After flying my way through the deadlands while avoiding the literal eye of Sauron, I made it to the Deadlanders fight. The Deadlanders. 
29 HP, 1 defense, 18 HP, 1 defense, and finally 35 HP and 1 defense. The Burbo attacks are only shot, does 3 damage and hits 3 time. It can poison num at random. The bite that does 4 damage, and it can also go underground. The balloon thing can do the spiky ball that does 5 damage, and a poison beam that does 3 damage and hits 2 time and it poisons. The crab has a claw pinch that does 4 damage, and a spore missile that does 2 damage, hits 3 time and can sleep, and he also has a sedate that does 4 damage and can go sleep. I had some trouble with this fight, but uh, I just used my normal V Urikentos. Turn 1, I use a Burly Bomb and Mega Rush on V. I do an Urikentos on the front and middle and me, and Maki attack. Now I need the last Zedlanders to hit V because she has first platting. And I finish it off with Urikanthus and we get our last level up of the run and I went with MP. I finished the fight without taking damage in 7 tries. After the fight, I went through the fridge with Fly and I entered the Roach Village. We have a last normal fight before the last two bosses. They all have a weakness to Ice, so we use Leaf with Power Exchange and an attack up from Royal Decree to spam Icefall and win the fight. Now is the time for the final cooking before the last fights. I bought a lot of tangy berries from Metal Island and dark cherries from the underground to cook berry smoothies. This item restores 99 TP. Since I'm only rank 8, I only have 10 inventory space. The first inventory space upgrade is at rank 9. So my inventory for the last two bosses is 6 berry smoothie and 4 squash tarts. I felt ready to fight the final boss, so I went back to the giant lair to finish the open puzzle. After tuning the open off, we had only 2 fights between us and the end. Wasking has 90 HP and 0 defense. He has a lot of attacks. So the first one is Axe Throw that does 6 damage. Then Axe Swipe that does 5 damage. Little Fireball that does 2 damage multi hits. A Big Fireball that does 5 damage. A Flame AoE that does 4 damage to everyone. And he can also use an item. Either uh, spicy fries that heals him for 4 HP and attack up for 2 turns or an item that give him 5 HP and defense up for 2 turns. Uh, phase 2 starts at around 40 HP and he'll have attack times 2 uh, till the rest of the fight. Alright, so this fight is really not that bad. We mostly rely on freeze lock to finish it without taking damage. The main thing for this fight is to use as little item as possible because the next fight is right after. It took me a while to get a good strat and finish the fight with only one item. Turn 1, I use a squash start on V, 2 tornado toss and 1 normal attack. I hope for good RNG and I want him to focus V with first platting. Turn 2, I continue with Tornado Toss and I try a Frigid Coffin. 
uh, that has 65% chance of working. In turn 3 I finished the fight with Tenaritas, now to the final challenge, the Everlasting King. Everlasting King, 55 HP times 3 and 1 defense, times 3 because at every time you put him at 10 HP, he'll full heal, he'll full heal twice, so you'll have to put him at 10 HP twice, then kill him. He has a lot of attacks, so the first the first main one is summon artifact, can summon a 2 key or 1 shield, the shield makes him invincible for while the shield is alive and you need to attack the shield 3 times. Both keys has 2 attacks, a beam attack that does 2 damage and a spin attack that does 3 damage. They also have a secret beam attack that does 9 damage when both are summoned. The boss also has a flame AoE that does 4 damage, a vine that does 3 damage, an axe throw that does 4 damage and then 3 damage and 2 hits, a fireball that does 3 damage and multi hits. That's his attack when he's flying but he also has attack when he's grounded. So when he's grounded, he's gonna heal for 3 every turn, and he'll do either a vine attack that does 5 damage, then 2 damage, or a drain attack that does 1 damage and heal for 1. This one is a mashing attack, like the watcher one. In phase 3, he'll, he's gonna summon both keys. That's it for his attack, and now I'll explain to you why this fight is the most RNG mess I've ever seen. Let's start with my build for this fight. V has power exchange, first plating, ADVP enhancer, Leaf has strong start and break, and the team has TP+. Alright, so after multiple hours of grinding the boss, I came up with a strat to kill the boss in 12 turns. We need first plating for turn 1, and we need the boss to focus V turn 1 with a single hit attack. The boss only has one single hit attack in the air, it's divine. We have about a 7% chance of getting it, but that's not all. The boss can, can also summon an artifact in the air. When he summons an artifact, it's a 33% chance for each artifact. The shield is the worst at any time, and we need to reset the fight if we get it. The key summon is good, but if the key doesn't focus V turn 1 and does the spin attack, we have to reset because it does 3 damage. But if it does the beam attack that does 2 damage, we can super block it with Kabu or Leaf. So that's just turn 1. And like 90% of my attempts doesn't go further than turn 1. Then, turn 2, we are praying with a bubble shield light on V that the boss focus her. It's about a 60% chance of focusing V and a 20% chance for each other party member. And if if there's a key, we are hoping for either the beam attack on Kabu or Leaf or the spin attack on V. Turn 3 is the same as turn 2, 
but now we have to worry about the flame AoE because the boss is, in, is now in the air. Turn 4 is the same as turn 2, and then we can guarantee turn 5 and 6 with bubble shield all stalling. And the rest of the fight, there's two more turns where we are praying with bubble shield light on V in front. So as you can see, we need 4 turns in a row where the boss doesn't focus anyone else than V. That he doesn't do any AoE, doesn't summon a shield, and we need the key summon to not do the spin attack or to focus V every time. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the odds of winning this fight without taking damage is lower than 1%, but I couldn't give up. I really wanted to end this challenge, so I tried and tried and tried and tried and... And at last, I got this attempt. Turn 1, I use a squash trot on V, a burly bomb on the bus to reduce his defense, and two hurricane toss. Here I'm hoping for either the vine attack, or an artifact summon that focuses V, or a beam attack on Kaburoli. Turn 2. I do a tornado toss and a bubble shell light on V, and I use a 99 TP item. Turn 3, I use Break, Hurricane Toss and Bubble Shield Light on V. Again, I am hoping for a focus on V and no AoE or Shield. The key did the beam attack, so I was able to super block. Turn 4, I use a Squash Trot on V. I do an hurricane toss and, a, and another bubble shield light on V. The key and the bus focused me. Okay, now I need to prepare myself for phase 3. I start with Bubble Shell Owl to restore my TP. Then I put the bus in phase 3 and I relay Leaf and do Bubble Shell Owl. I relay so that Leaf won't lose his next turn. Okay, I need to focus now. With Kabu in front, I can do a precise understrike to kill both keys and attack the boss. 
I'll just need a little bit of luck with Bubble Shell Light on Kabu in front. Oh my god, okay. Normally, there's only one last RNG turn. Now my goal is to stall with Hurricane Toss and Bubble Shell All to put the boss low enough so that I can kill him in one turn. And now, a gift from God himself, a Charm TP Restore. This changes my strat completely. Charm TP Restore is half of the attack used, so I got 3 TP for using Bubble Shield all. Normally, I would pray for the boss to focus V in front with a normal Bubble Shield, but because I got the 3 TP extra, I was sure that I could guarantee the boss. I tried to come up with a strat on the fly, but I had to ask someone the damage that Fly Drop would do on EDK. Thanks to this person that responded at 5 a.m. in the morning, they told me 10 or 11 damage for fighter up, so I was pretty sure to kill the boss. Basically, with the 3 extra TP, I can do another tornado toss that put the boss at 18. I then restore all my TP and I use a bubble shell all. Now the boss heals for 3 because he's on the ground, but I can finish him with a hurricane toss and one fighter up. And after around 12 hours, I defeated the Everlasting King without taking damage in 284 tries. And just like that, we beat the game without ever taking damage. After a bunch of cutscenes, we go to the end queen and the credit roll. So finally, the answer to the question, can we beat bug pebbles without taking damage, is yes we can. But with glitches and only on PC. This challenge was really fun to do, so please leave a comment with any suggestion for a future challenge or advice on the video. And if you liked the, the Damage Less series, please consider subscribing. If you want to follow my Twitch channel, there's a link in the description. I stream speedrun of Bugs Pebbles and some challenge runs. Alright, see y'all in the future video.